Hi folks, I'm Alan Watt and this is Cutting Through the Matrix. A blurb that is. And it's March 16th, 2014. I've uh, been awfully busy. I'd like to put more blurbs out. In the meantime, I've got more interviews coming up and other shows. I do have the opportunity to go back on regular shows, but I don't want to get caught up in that uh, too quickly because it it takes a it's a full time job basically trying to go over all the world's problems, and the problems will keep coming because they're manufactured for us to follow. In fact, that's how you direct the future by those who already own it basically and own the past. So I've been awfully, awfully busy, and even last night into today. I've been working on the, the water pump here because that packs in about 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the problem is outside, you can't get into the well because it's under about 6 feet of snow. So I, uh, I'm stumbling along here as, as you have to do sometimes when nothing else is working properly. But tonight I was going to talk about this age we're living in, the age which is well Directed, every age is well directed by those in power. I've gone into the history of the creation of systems, and everything is a system, a complete system, worked out by not not only those who rule over it, but all their helpers. From the ancient times, you, you had priesthoods, advisors. They were the pre, they were the advisors. They decided who pharaohs would see and wouldn't see. In fact, they had a lot of power. And then the other religions took over from that down through time. And then we have a thing called democracy, where we've got not just kings and queens to, to keep uh, supported in a lifestyle we can never imagine, but all their offspring and thousands and thousands of bureaucrats as well, who much must live higher on the hog than you'll ever, ever see. Uh, that's the problem we have today. But those in power and those who manage the power structure on behalf of the owners of the system make sure you're given a complete system to believe in and to believe. all your reality, in fact, is manufactured for you. Even, even the, the memes that you'll see and the themes that you'll see that are put out there uh, where you have different topics often related to each other across the world are, in fact, just that. They're related to each other to get you gossiping, yapping, thinking about things that they're telling you to think about and... Uh, they can be minor things, fairly minor, or the ooh and ahs stories that we always get. And uh, But you also get an awful lot of um, preparation for the future. Austerity, Agenda 21, also called the Millennium Project, uh, and many other names, sustainability, etc., etc. We're all being trained into this new system on behalf of those who manage it way above us, of course. Most of you will never even know their names of all the thousands and thousands of guys working in think tanks, men and women, and working as advisors for presidents, prime ministers, and on behalf of the masters who own the, who own the system, basically. And those who run the money always own the system. They, they, they always do. Money is power in this system. They made sure of that, you see. That's why they have the money. That's why uh, a small clique always keeps control of the distribution and creation of money across the planet this elastic thing called money that's backed by nothing generally except massive debt. That's okay because you'll always pay off the debt in real goods and sweat and all the rest of it. Remember, there's many forms of slavery, many, many forms of slavery. And I've mentioned so many times with Charles Galton Darwin talking on behalf of the elite in the 1950s when he said we are in the process of creating a more efficient form of slavery. It's one, in other words, which you'll never figure out. You'll never figure out. You'll get the ones down below to attack. You'll have politicians to attack, throw tomatoes at, go boo. And prime ministers, presidents, they come and go. And then the next one's just as bad as the last one, and the same agendas go on, you see. So you're given these punch and judy shows to distract you and to give you hope that once you get the, this guy out, the next one might be better. And never is, of course, because there's only one agenda. But remember, you can be taxed to death. Tax means to labor. And uh, the, the original idea of democracy uh, had it written, well, talked about, put it that way, because the British Constitution is one of these verbal ones where they can, it's very, very flexible for lawyers to use. And um, it's intentionally so. But the idea is that you couldn't tax labor because that's a form of slavery. 
That's what laboring is. It's, it's a form of slavery. Slavery. Uh, you tax your body, you tax your muscles, you tax your energy. And so they brought in income tax, of course. So it's a very sneaky way, sneaky way of getting your income off of you. In other words, the, you, the, the, the fruits of your own labor are taken from you. And they disguise uh, slavery under different reasons for doing so. It's always for the greater good of, of those who rule you and all their helpers who live so high in the hog. However, getting back to the, the main thing here, they always keep control of the future. And I've mentioned over the many years here uh, about the culture industry. That's where you get your opinions from, your, your feelings, your emotions from, your tears from, your laughter from. You're even taught what to laugh at today. In fact, it's a whole science of getting people to laugh. Uh, it's, it's basically Pavlovian. The canned laughter that the U.S., came out with back in the 1950s, maybe even before that for a radio, uh, it, was, it was a stimulus response. For, you, were to, you get the stimulus of, of hearing people laughing, and you'll laugh along with it. There's even a term in Hollywood, it's, it's called like a joke. There's a formula to a joke, and you come to the punchline, uh, and, and people are so trained in it, they'll laugh at the punchline, even though it's technically not funny at all. So you're trained in so many ways you don't, you don't even, you're not even aware of. And in the archive section at CuttingThroughTheMatrix.com, I've gone through, over the years, various articles, some from the intelligence, the U.S. intelligence for the military, who they've published in their own magazines, uh, articles like The Mind Has No Firewall, and Perpetual War, uh, and things like that. It's very Orwellian, because remember, wars are not meant to be won, it's meant to be continued under many guises. And many reasons for that, too. It keeps you subservient to the state who's going to protect you. And you don't mind getting taxed so much again, because it's the research and development must mean you get better, better weapons to keep you safe, right? That's the whole con behind it. But in Perpetual War, they talked about the techniques they were using. And that, that, that particular article was so interesting because... It talks about the use of, of the same culture industry that they'd used against Americans and the world uh, to be used against the, the, the whole world step by step, including the Muslim countries too. And the guy in it obviously was an intelligence officer. And he says, well, give them all the, uh, the, 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 the degrading stuff that we've made so popular in the U.S., and not just violence and nudity and all the rest of it, but as far as you can possibly take it, to destroy uh, the cultures that are still firmly held together by their own moral rules, etc., etc. People who are moral can't be taken over. It's very easy to create, bring around, people around to immor- uh, immoral acts, basically, or immoral thinking, until it's standard fear on your television. So much so, you'll laugh at things that technically perhaps you shouldn't even be laughing at, including grisly stuff as well. It's so bad today that, that when you, and I've mentioned this many times too, you're going to see shortly the next step that the big boys talked about after they won the homosexual battles for being shown on television um, and, and so on. The next step, they said, would be bestiality, things like that, and intergenerational sex, doing away with the gender uh, uh, thing altogether uh, and underage stuff. Doing away. In fact, there's a lord in Britain apparently just under, under fire right now because he stood up for one of these groups many times that wanted to bring down the age of consent to about four years of age, believe it or not. Now, that doesn't cause outrage today because people are so contaminated with watching their daily fear of corruption from television because it's standard entertainment today that there's no outrage at all. And there'll be even less outrage when they go the next step and the next step. That's how you, you, you do it by the Fabian style, step by step. Give them time to absorb this and then go the next step, and we accept it very easily. It's very very easy to do, isn't it? It's very easy to do. I've talked before about the guy who was sent out to catch the wild boars uh, in in the U.S. Some parts of the U.S. have wild boar problems, and um, apart from Washington, D.C., and uh, you you find that these boars uh, were very wild and had all their senses there. They tried everything to catch them. And the, a guy came in, he said, I'll catch them for you. And he, he'd come every day with his half-ton truck. The first day he'd, he'd drive uh, and stop about a quarter of a mile away. 
they'd watch him and he'd dump off some feed for them and drive away for about another quarter of a mile and watch them. And he kept doing that for a, 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 about a week or so. And then each time he dropped off the food, he'd, he'd get closer. He wouldn't drive so far away. And they'd get used to him. And eventually they'd come right up to the truck over, uh, over the weeks. And he'd put the stakes in, and then he'd put the, the fencing in. And eventually he came in one day and he closed the fence. That's how you do it with the public too. Granny's been contaminated gradually in her era. She'll sit with her daughter and watch stuff that that is pushing the envelope, and so she doesn't turn off the TV. And so the daughter or the son watches it along with them. When they grow up and have children, they're more and more contaminated, so they can go to the next step and the next step and the next step. Until, I've said before, you'll have live sex on television as standard fare. Even in comedies, there'll be live sex, you see. Because, you see, you can be contaminated so easily, like Besmanov said. And Yuri Besmanov said that uh, they were so surprised the KGB when they saw the U.S. in the 70s when they visited it to see just how well their agenda had worked since the 1960s to destroy the culture. Now, but that means destroying morality, a common values that were shared, and how people would be outraged at certain things. That's all gone. That was gone then, actually. And it's really down in the pits today. Nothing bothers most folk at all except their pocketbook. That's about it. But I'd like to also touch on the effects it's having on the general public. Professor Quigley and many other people, professors teach this kind of thing to do with histories and rise and fall of empires, which they also call ages, between the ages. And you'll find that before it falls, let's presuming it was falling naturally, which is another story altogether, then uh, certain things happen. The people lose their traditional values, Uh, the elite, uh, and everyone copies the elite's behavior, by the way. It's mimicry, Uh, because you are taught to worship them, and you do. You're always in awe in the presence of power and lots of cash. You behave differently in the presence. And you find that the, the, the debauchery starts, of course. The scandals break out until it's normal. The general public copy the same behavior because the media and their culture industry teaches them so. In ancient times, they used drama plays and so on to do it, to keep people, to, especially the young, to mimic what they saw. And eventually, the people are, are, are non-functional, really, and they're degenerate, and they become rather stupid in many ways. There's many things they could prattle about, like all the television they've watched their entire life and all the stars' names and but anything else is, is, is out of the picture. They, they don't know. That's how successful it's been in this age. And remember, these things have been done through the ages intentionally to destroy cultures. Just like, as I say, in the Perpetual Wars, things from the, the U.S. War College and their magazine, they said that would use the degeneracy that they put on Americans to, to basically do the same thing across the world. And they know it'll work because you've all your behaviorists and think tanks working together and the neuroscientists to find ways to make it more effective. Uh, even anthropologists, very important anthropologists, they bring them into to Iraq with them and, and, and all those countries that they've taken out and t- taken the oil. And they, they work with the troops and so on to find that the Achilles heel in, in different cultures so to, they can destroy it all the more quicker. Uh, sex is a great thing. Uh, that, you know, and especially when there's natural restrictions on sex, sexual behavior, sex is always wins because the youth go gaga since their hormones are skyrocketing at the time. That that's part of the weaponization of it all. So those at the top know what they're doing, because only when you degenerate can they bring in a new system. We are even more subjugated than the last system. It's very simple, and that's the whole agenda between, behind Agenda 21 and all of these things to bring into a state where you have to be told what to do by experts. Uh, And the big boys who helped design this part of the system have written their books about it. Uh, They've done it all. It's been completed. Most folk can't think without it. And they'll parrot automatically any expert that comes along. Even if it could be any actor on television saying they're an expert, they'd believe it. As I say, I've watched the thermometer is here every night all through this winter. It's been the coldest winter I've ever seen in Canada. And the official uh, weather forecasts from even the government stations are about 20, sometimes 30 degrees above the real temperatures outside at night. 
Now, why is that? Why don't they adjust it throughout the night? They don't. They don't say, oh, we're surprised by last night's temperature drop. Nope. So that goes down in the books as that's what it was. When they say five below, it was actually 35 below. Amazing stuff going on. And because you're trained not to even look for and check anything for yourself, why should you check anything for yourself? Why would they lie to you? What well, doesn't fit in with Agenda 21, global warming, and all the carbon pollutions and so on, and taxes they want to, get to, to make you pay? So it doesn't fit in. So it doesn't exist, you see. And I'll do most folk. Most folk will say, well, I feel rather freezing, but uh, it must just be me. That, that, we see, we make excuses for it because it never dawns on them that, that, that they're getting lied to. It never dawns on them at all. But here's a thing, too. You must destroy the existing religions, especially when there's a lot of people in the same religion or from the culture that spawned off of, from the religion. You must attack and destroy those and bring in a, a humanistic type society in the, in the intermediate stage before they bring in the earth worship, of course, which Gorbachev talked about, that they would bring a, a, form, of, a form of earth worship in. And that can be done. Like a science fiction, they can teach the young that Mother Earth is alive and a creature and uh, it's the one soul of the world and all this stuff, new age stuff that they're getting prowled on about. And that's one of the biggest techniques, of course, that they can really, really brainwash the young with. You look at what's happening today just with fiction and an internet too. You've got vampire cults. There's one today where they're into the fantasy playing acting and it goes out of hand, of course. And, uh, and one of them is talking about uh, a vampire-obsessed truck driver. He kept sex slaves locked up in his semi-trailer near Twilight Express for months at a time uh, and abused while wearing fake fangs. He even fell down their teeth, made them wear false teeth. He kidnapped them. This is a, where do you think all that started? Remember Buffy the Vampire Slayer? And all the hordes of vampire movies afterwards. And these folk got into it. The sadomasochists always jump into these things. That's why you were given Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And all the other ones that came afterwards. That's why you were given it, folks. I can remember at the time, even in Toronto, there was articles in the paper where people in Toronto uh, found youngsters drinking each other's blood in back alleys and things like that. That's the effect it can have on lots of people. And then with, the, with all the sadomasochism, it's only a step from, from doing that and kidnapping people and, and going the whole way with it until you end up with death and all the rest of it. But there's no doubt about it. This guy, it says Timothy G. Vifides, or Vifides, who's 54, accused of kidnapping at least two women and holding them in his cemetery where he traveled the country. One was a 19-year-old victim who's also a relative, fell down her teeth and forced her to wear dentures where he wore a pair of his own with fangs on it. Another adult victim said she agreed to go to dinner with him, but ended up captive in his truck for three months. They were either beaten a lot, uh, almost choked to death. And this guy who did it, obviously, is also into child pornography. It says that they found lots of child porn on his stuff. They should use that same technique with all the British politicians. I mean, a, a real investigation, not the fake ones you get. But anyway, this is what you've got there. And it put me in mind of uh, all the New Age. The New Age movements came out of Freemasonry, by the way. Uh, the, the official monthly magazine of the, the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, which isn't Scottish, by the way, its name was, uh, of the magazine was called The New Age. And they said in the magazine that they were, they were going to be responsible for bringing in The New Age, you see. Now, New Age has within it the perennial religions, which they bring out at this time when they're taking culture down. The perennial religions being uh, all vague kinds of spirituality, gurus of galore, uh, mystic meanings that you'll have to find out if you want to get to a higher heaven, vibrating at higher frequencies, color-coded frequencies, uh, and to vibrate out of this world, uh, yada, yada, yada. The oneness of us all, you see, the, uh, the world's soul, uh, blah, 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 all the fairy, fairy stuff that works awfully well because, you see, you can always 
you can always take people out of their religion. You see, but you can't take the religion out of the people. When you take something away, they will try and fill it with something else in order to get meaning from life. And the more pressures and chaos you put on people, the more terrified you make them, the more desperate they are to find a meaning of life. Because, you see, they can't deal with all the masses of problems. Oh, we're going to have a financial collapse. Yeah, but we get this all the time because we're kept terrified of wars uh, or the threat of wars or, or financial collapse and all the rest of it by those who own the system. That's how they keep you under control. Which makes it kind of weird, because why would you want to keep the same system going that's never worked for you? And you think you can vote and change it. Oh, gee. Well, anyway, that was the vampire obsessed trucker, right? And then you had the Heaven's Gate. Remember in the 90s, you had the Heaven's Gate cult, a religious, so-called a religious group. And in the 90s, they, they followed this guru who brought in UFO religions, uh, millennialism, uh, they brought in all the new age thing, the oneness, and plus evolution too. So your, your body and soul were going to evolve to the next ET kind of thing. And people uh, flocked to this, this character, who was a, a nutcase fanatic, but he had deeper problems than just that. He was also homosexual, it seems, and, and this is how he, he's, a lot of them, including himself, were castrated, actually, in his cult. And what these guys will do, the technique are very simple, but always the same, whether it's a Jim Jones or anything else. You can start going into what you think is occult teachings. And it's very popular, this kind of thing, especially, as I say, when people have lost their basic religions, their guidelines, and they're desperate for meaning in life. Uh, and, uh, because they they feel helpless and they can't fight all the problems of the world, which they're bombarded with all the time. And so they, they join the cults hoping to find, if I can just find the secrets of what this means and that means, then I'll be godlike. I'll be, a, I'll be, I'll, I'll be free from worry. I'll be free uh, from, from threats of any kind because I'll be super, like a superman or a godlike, you see. Uh, and uh, and so out come, out come the gurus A lot must apply to you by the CIA Because you'll find the same CIA uh, research going on Within all these cults Before they end up killing themselves That's always there And um, because you see you can use that on a bigger scale In the general population And this is what's coming about today That's why you've got so many talk shows out there now Pretending to know secrets Now I enjoy deciphering old, old Masonic uh, Codes and things Because I never forget for a minute That Whatever you can decode Whatever man can decode Was put together by man Not some supernatural being And secret societies Down through the ages have always used codes So there's so 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 no one would find out What they were talking about or conversing about Amongst themselves There was, there was hand codes And everything they could, Like a whole language even the early monks in Christianity, when they took the vows of silence, had, they developed a, a system that became worldwide for all their groups of various hand signals and gestures because it was forbidden to speak, you see, in some of these, these, these groups. So there's always a, an answer for it which a, a person can decipher. We know, too, that some cultures have had and do have uh, alphabets, which where the letters are also numbers. We know the Romans, for instance, and even the Greeks uh, used uh, the Chaldeans, and you could actually use the Hebrew as well, because it was also a number. And if they, if they were scrambled into numbers, they could, they could uh, mark it on sticks. The messenger ran with the stick to the other part of the army, and another person there could decode it, you see. Very simple cryptology. But you'll find the same thing with the, the terms of the USA and Freemasonry. And you can spend your life t reading it uh, and having a good laugh, because when you know what things are, you often do laugh, you understand, of how they communicate to each other. But things go deeper with some people too. And these are the ones who are scared stiff of life. And mind you, this system is, it means to try and scare you of life altogether. The first 
the, the best war to have, even, even in ancient times to the present, is psychological warfare on the public. You're just struggling with psychology and fear, and, and they aren't going to fight uh, like virile, angry men. It's not going to happen. They're already conquered. Very simple. So you can all be conquered so easily by those who understand the formulas. And believe you me, you have literally thousands of think tanks across the world, all using these techniques to make you follow them on behalf of the big boys themselves. Make them follow, even the things that are, sound good, green this, green that, uh, because they need, they need you to protest for the very laws to get passed that they want themselves so they can have everybody off the land and they can drill there or get gas out of it or whatever else they happen to want to do. They want to own all the resources of the planet and they use the, 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 what they call useful idiots. Well-meaning people, but useful idiots. The ones who lead them know exactly what they're, they're there for. They're getting well paid for it. But yeah, yeah, getting back to the Heaven's Gate cult, uh, it's very interesting to watch the videos up there about it and you get an idea of how these things actually work. Uh, and they're all very, very similar, where they bring you in with little secrets, with a guru who knows the secrets, and they give you uh, forms of hypnosis go on, even in a general conversation. Because there's different ways you think, there's different levels that you think on and reflect on as opposed to the, the one you, you, you would use for driving a racing car, where you must be on the ball split second. And there's another level beneath that where you're, it's meditative, you're contemplative about things. So these bring you into a contemplative state and a hypnotic state. And, and you start to, your, your total logic part for survival gets submerged into the, the, the subconscious state and you're under hypnosis and easily managed to believe things you should never ever, things you should actually scoff at. So you had the, the Order of the Solar Temple, you had the Heaven's Gate group, you had the, the, the Jones, the, the uh, uh, group two, the Jim Jones cult, they all killed themselves mass suicide. And, uh, and CIA involvement, definitely, it was known about that one too, all along. Because you're, you're being stu- these are being studied, they can be used on a mass scale, mass scale. So be very careful of these groups and people who pretend to know secrets. As I say, I could sit and teach you secrets all the, all the time, but uh, simply by decoding stuff. That's all it is. And put, as I say, what man decodes, man put together, not some god or some supernatural deity. Very, very simple stuff, you see. It's just to keep it secret from the public. That's the, that's the only reason it's secret. Not because there's some magic involved in there. So we're careful of folk who come out as gurus and tell you about their own personal experiences. Uh, and you hope, to, if you catch a, a, a hold of their, their robe, uh, that somehow this person's closer to the great all. Call it what you want. The great all, the oneness, than you are. That's a standard way of human behavior. Where the, 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 at one time the, the people would touch the cloak of, of a king. Uh, they believed it had curative powers, even in the time of King James. They were regarded, regarded as holy, closer to God than you. Same with, with, with priests and so on. Because you, you never have enough faith in yourself. You, you don't have the confidence that these people seem to portray to you to do the same thing, you see. So you fall for all these groups. And the con men who make a, a, a killing off you, let's hope it's just a financial killing, who come out and say, yep, and they rehash all the old theosophy stuff, all the old Rosicrucian stuff. They don't have to write new books. They just take it and hold chapters from previous ones over 150 years. It's all been done before, you see. But there's no end of folk who want to believe it because they have nothing to believe in now and they're desperate. Absolutely desperate. And as you get more and more afraid of everything and all this news is bashing you, oh my God, there's a thousand things and you can't deal with them all. You can't deal with more than two major crises in your life at a time or you crack up. And we're in that stage of almost cracking up. Along comes the gurus. And they tell you that a wonderful experience. And they tell you they maybe took drugs with it or maybe not. And the great all came through them on a hilltop or whatever. And their whole vomit body vibrated. And they could have left the world, you know. 
You could have left the world. Because you see, you're all base to tell you, because you're, you, you're, you're in a lower density of vibration. You're not high enough, you see. Of course, there's many ways to get high. But that's what you're told, and, and people fall for it in swarms. And they throw money at gurus, just like priests, because they think they've they got the answer. They're closer to the great all than I am. And they'll pay big money for the next bit of the code, and the next bit of the code. And here's the key to it with cults. Here's the key to it, and con men. Here's the key, folks. Eventually, these leaders, after taking you on this, this, this big ride, this crazy ride, you see, that you've followed step by step, waiting to get to the ultimate oneness and knowledge and so on, they can't take you any further except out of the world. Out of the world. And the psychology, their own psychology that's working on them as the leader, makes them commit suicide. Some of them don't do that. They get you to commit suicide and they bugger off somewhere else. Because there's nowhere else they can take you. I can remember Bill Cooper talking years ago about this too. And he said, he said uh, they always tell you there's an ultimate secret. An ultimate secret. And he says, guess what? There is no ultimate secret. That's, that's the secret. <laughs> and that's it, you see, folks. So be very, very, very careful of these, these, these groups. And, and as I say, look up these stories, Order of the Solar Temple, Heaven's Gate religious group, which is really a cult, and the vampire-obsessed trucker, and also the one with the werewolf they had recently in the States, a guy dressed like a werewolf, playing a fantasy game. He got young 14-year-old girls to come and meet him to get into the fantasy. People are so screwed up now they can't tell the difference between fantasy and fiction, and it's very dangerous. Because with all the slasher movies, which people are gobbling up like crazy, it's always mixed with sex and violence. That's a great technique for conquering the mind, you know, sex and violence. Very primitive, you see. Both parts of it, very primitive. And some directors and producers know this technique perfectly well because they themselves are very warped, believe you me. And here's the werewolf one. It's in the Mail Online. It says, Werewolf enthusiast, 44 years old, groomed 14-year-old girl for sex and went on a run after recruiting teens online to join his fantasy weapon games. And you see him standing there with uh, his black outfit on and his leather strapping on and, and the werewolf head and a rifle in one hand and a pistol in the other. And there's all these young bimbos around them that flocked to him because it's, it's, they're getting right into all these games. Do you think it's, I've mentioned before, these games were all, are all, were all designed by military, you know. Why do you think the military would be designing children's games? Why do you think there's so many behaviorists involved in creating these games and psychologists and so on? Just to sell games, you think? Do you think that? But he's 44 years old, this guy, and eventually ran off with one of them at 40, who's 14 years old. Quite something. And, uh, and this is all the rage now, you see. People cannot switch off from fantasy into reality. And luckily they got this guy right now. But, I mean, what's his past been like? How far has he gone in the past? There's a thing they might never find out. I mean, werewolves can't talk, eh? they only bark. But anyway, this is the kind of thing, as I say, be very, very careful of because we're living in weaponized times and even news is weaponized. And even the disclosure of when you think you're fighting the news, in a sense, or exposing the news that's given to you, you can overwhelm people by, by hitting them with 50,000 things at the same time. You can handle two crises at a time. Why do you think it's used bombarding people with bad news? Boom, 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 boom. Till you're under the kitchen table quivering in fear. So don't, don't be terrified. Don't get petrified and made immobile by a weaponized system. Your culture is weaponized. 
your entertainment is completely weaponized. I mean, they've got amazing, brutal, uh, sadomasochistic sex in almost every movie, and and the the scenes in a lot of these awful movies are just stuck in there to get the sex in because they have nothing to do with the story. And and the youngsters, ones that are watching all these slasher movies, and so, supposedly the guys are horror. It's the same thing. Whatever little hook of a story is meant to make you watch it right through, hoping you find, because you see you're a curious person, you want to find out who done it, that kind of thing. And how does it end? But it's just a vehicle. The horror thing is just a vehicle for, for, for all the sexual cinemasochism that goes on in between it. That's what it's for. It's a delivery vehicle for delivering the weapon part of it into your brain. The mind has no firewall. And today you don't have the traditional family anymore. It's been under attack as well. That had to go first. And so there's no one to tell the children, you know. Best not to watch that. I'll tell you why. And then you do tell them why. This is weaponized to hit you and to make you behave in a certain way. And a way that you'll often regret. And might get into, into danger as well. There's no one to tell them anymore. Because you see, a long, long time ago, not just Bertrand Russell and others who worked with the big global society to bring in this present culture, he, he said that, that, that it doesn't matter if the parent or parents raise the child, the technique of social indoctrination for the culture to be given to the children is given by the state now. They've already put the parents or the parent out of the picture until the child has more respect for, say, a youngish teacher uh, than their parent, their stickler of a parent. Parents are always portrayed as stupid in the movies and all the sitcoms and so on. It's been very successful. What do you know? You're just my dad. You're just my dad. And that's how it is in today's society. But it won't stop because people need a a craving for entertainment. That's one of their big weaknesses. That's why it's always been used against you. Down through the ages, even the days of Plato, he talks about the possibility of licensing uh, the playwrights. I think they already were, actually. But he wanted to license musicians as well because they could even then sing songs that could lead to revolution if the youngsters would follow them. You find down in the times of uh, Shakespeare and even other countries too, with their own versions of things, plays were often put out as a way of communicating some injustice to the general public. Very common. Still today you're given the same techniques by those who run the system. But they want you to change a certain part of it, but they actually use you to demand that they try and change a certain part of it, which has nothing to do with the outcome that you're actually expecting to see. All these big national parks they created that you can't go on anymore. All the zoned areas, the corridor areas under Agenda 21, where there's human pe- uh, uh, corridors and animal corridors, and you believe it all? No, it's, but you'll find clauses in there where uh, the big corporations can, can get rights, licensing rights to drill, frack, and everything else on those lands. First, they get the people off. And they got most of them off by doing it in the farms, by big agri-farm business, because everything's corporate today, international corporations. And the next part, too, is using heavy taxation to get folk off the land. Or simply closing down a road and you can't get access to where you, where you live. So many ways to do it. Or bring in the, the agencies that do the eco-testing and stuff. Oh, you can't live here anymore. This is contaminated. Many ways to get you off the land. And we've watched this since at least the 60s escalating. And all the big groups, of course, get heavily funding by big foundations that we don't elect. The richest foundations on the planet. Some of them worth trillions of dollars. And often the leaders are also the head bankers. I'm talking about the international money lenders, not the ones that just have a a bank on the corner. Old stuff, isn't it? But it's true. Biospheres for the UN. Biospheres. So the first thing you have to do is try and reclaim your brain. 
That's quite an objective, you know. Because you find that almost everything you think about is given to you to think about. The opinions you come to are ones you've been guided to come to. Mainly by the omission of another side of a story. I should laugh at Walt Disney when I was small because I knew that rabbits didn't really talk to deer and things like that. But in the Disney movies, they gave you all this, this complete fiction. And they'd even show you sometimes where the carnivores would talk to the herbivores, which doesn't happen in real life. The carnivores tend to eat the herbivores, but you were given a complete fiction to get prepare folk for all the guises they were going to use to steal all the land off you. In the old days, it was much easier. The king just came into the country like the Normans did, you know, and set up their warlords as, as to take like, like satrapies for the king. They were over the over um, lords for them. And uh, all the serfs, you know, all the people became serfs, which is a nice way of saying slave, because you couldn't move from the land and, and, uh, and you weren't paid for it. You simply forked out most of your crops to, to the, the lord. And you supplied him with excesses that he could sell. And you supplied him too with, with even your body. If you wanted it for warfare purposes, he would just take it. And if he didn't go, he burned you down or killed you. Uh, that was, you know, democracy of uh, in old times. It was so wonderful. Knights were bold and all that. But that's the reality of it. Today, it's a disguise system where you're far better behaved, actually, because you think you're living in something called democracy. And and you all have rights. And and you do have rights. You have the rights not to go outside the boundaries of, of, of everyday talk or speech. There's authorized speech today, you see. And you have committees sitting deciding what's authorized and what isn't. And it, it doesn't, they don't have to even have an argument anymore. It's about discourse about something. No, if you say something, they'll try and find you're a hater or they'll give you a slur name or something like that, which shuts you up completely Pavlovian style because everyone's been brainwashed into what these words mean. Even though it's got nothing to do with the present situation on any particular topic you're talking about. It's just outside the box. They don't want you to go there. You can't go out there. You'll find just how much freedom that you have then if you do. And this technique can be spread to many, many other areas. Because I remember reading about the two guys, and there were two guys from New York that were employed from a big top marketing company by the World Health Organization to, to bring in uh, a system to get people to stop smoking. And the guys whose big think tanks and lots of money went into your tax money, of course, uh, to get you to stop smoking. And the whole idea was to create social approval for things that they wanted you to do and social disapproval for things that they didn't want you to do. They started with the children at school until if someone left a cigarette 500 yards away, the children would smoke. I mean, they'd choke, sorry, they'd start coughing and choking, uh, even they're about half a mile away from you. And that's a Pavlovian response. Then they spread it into the general society. And then step by step, it's always incremental. That, well, people who work in offices could smoke outside the office. Then you stop that. Well, they can't smoke in the street now. So, you, And step by step. You, you. Now, this the two guys said in an article that they wrote about how successful they'd been at changing the behavior of people. It's behavior modification. It says, they said, we can use this on any other thing we, we choose, the same techniques. And it'll work just as well. Incrementally, give it a few years. Step by step. And, and you can vilify any group you want to. Whether it be obese people or whatever it happens to be. Or even meat eaters, say. Whatever they, whatever they choose will be vilified with the same techniques. And you always get the youngsters to at school. You get local authorities to ban it in workplaces or around workplaces. Uh, until they're made to conform or they're, or they're fined out of existence or in the prison. Now, getting back to what I was talking about, about the new age and so on, be very, very careful before you give your brain away to any con man. I mean, there's, there's even late night talk shows that do nothing but talk about this stuff, knowing they're conning the people and knowing that, that it could cause harm to different ones too. But, but again, obviously, it's not our problem. It's amazing how you can always justify it when your paycheck is, is pretty fat and uh, it's not your problem, isn't it? But but there you go. Someone, some guy comes along and says, I've got the answer. Or he comes out with stars or over his suit or something uh, and tells you about his experiences. 
or is is another guru of some kind, or even a famous uh, person like the reincarnation of Jesus or, or or Gandhi or whoever it happens to be. If you fall for that, folks, something's really seriously wrong in your life, in your in your mind. And they tell you, oh yeah, you, you're way up to violet, get the violet colors going. You vibrate higher in the violet colors, you know. And you can vibrate right out of this world into a high astral plane. Safe. You see, see, it's a promise of safety in a fearful world. All what happens at the end of an age. This, this age was planned to end by those in control. And they bring in their new system. And you're even better slaves than you were before. That's what it's all about. But don't just follow people blindly because they, they give out tantalizing little bits of information. As I say, if you just pile up, buy a pile of old Rosicrucian books, uh, you'll see it's all in there. Just rehashing the same. They don't have to make up new stuff. Just rehash it all. Generations of stuff. Going way back. Always promising you the next lure. You see? Some of them even give you classes on conology. That's what I call it conology. That's, what, that's the art of conning people. And they give them classes on it. And they promise them, if you just get to the next step, you'll be higher and higher in your understanding. And when you reach, when you're at that stage where you understand it all, you have these super godlike powers. But they can never take you there, you see, unless they tell the whole cult to commit suicide. Or they might just see if they've got enough in their bank account now and pack it in. But there's no end, no end of people who've had, since the 1960s especially, this alternate, they call it perennial religion. They always pull out the hat at times of the end of an age. The same perennial, the reincarnation thing, the whole idea of hidden masters, hidden masters. And often the guys who present themselves as masters, he has to be a hidden master who's now in the, out in the open, right? Otherwise, how would he know this stuff? What man can decipher, man will put together in the first place. And I very much doubt he was vibrating above the, the kitchen table when he was doing it. And it's so easy to tell people, and we like telling people about our odd experiences. We all have them, odd experiences. But there's never any answer or meaning that we're left with. Once in a blue moon there might be something, but it generally doesn't repeat itself over and over. When they tell you they do have all the answers, you're dealing with someone that P.T. Barnum would, would advocate, like a student of his. When he says a sucker born every minute. Ancient techniques. Ancient techniques. But it's very lucrative for those who want to exploit people. I generally put the information out for free. That's all. Here's what it means. This is how they communicate to each other. Here's a degreed system, just like a military system from private all the way up to general. Same idea. And lots of people think they're superior. Lots of them do. The ones who really are superior are only superior because they understand the art of keeping the masses in a different reality from themselves. And picking their, their, their sons and daughters' wives for them. A standard down through the ages with the, with the wealthy elite. They tell you to marry for love. They marry wealth. Wealth and their offspring. That's why they live through their offspring. Their progeny. Be careful. Don't give your brain away. And when they tell you they've got, they can always have the same experience, this high, high spiritual experience. Tell them to prove it. They can't prove it to you. Everything has to be taken on belief. Your gullibility, you see. They can't. You can't fool animals the same way. They hire ma- mammals like chimps and things. You can't do it with them. Because they don't understand language as you know it. That The art of conning human beings is done through persuasion where you start with a common, agreed idea, 
And then someone with a good vocabulary and an intellect can warp it off into La La Land and have you follow it and agreeing all the way, nodding your head. That's the dialectic process. Like a salesman uses. They start off as a nice day, you nod your head. Nice house you've got here, you nod your head. You're, you're saying, yes, 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 you see. And then along the sales pitch, this is a nice vacuum, yes. It's all psychology, folks. Read Plato, read all the, read all the other philosophers, same thing. They start off with a premise, that you, which you can, you can all say, yeah, we stand on the ground, don't we? Yeah, oh yeah, we all stand on the ground. Before you know it, this guy's telling you can vibrate higher and higher. If you just pay him the money, he'll give you the secrets. And there's techniques to make you believe it. The perennial religion. As though understanding is going to cause something to happen. Amazing, isn't it? So be very, very careful. And watch out for the cults. And if you've got children, if you've got children and they're just obsessed with their technologies, they can't talk to anybody in the face-to-face anymore. And they're maybe talking to all kinds of weirdos because they don't know who is on the other end of that phone. And they're texting to and all the sock puppets put up by government agencies and foundations and, and experiments run on them even by the universities like MIT. They don't even know what's happening. But it's all carefully monitored to see who's working. This is the big laboratory as we, as we live day by day. There's another experiment going on. There's many experiments going on to find out what will work on the mass of the people, the bulk of the population. Be careful. Now I've got to get back to trying fixing this water pump here. If it's possible to do, which I'm not really sure it is until the summer. As I say, I've never seen so much snow as we've had this year in Canada. And uh, the temperature is still plummeting at night, way below zero. And during the day too. Still isn't getting above the freezing mark. And stacks and stacks of snow to go. It's going to be murder trying to move once that snow starts to melt and freeze, melt and freeze day by day. Whenever that starts and uh, it floods into the road and freezes and you can't, it's like a skating rink, of course. There will be flooding this year too, as they play up the chaos, you see, that's caused. By the way, I meant to mention, there's articles out there from a few years ago, and I've read them before, where it was found out that agreements have been reached through all the different states in the US and parts of Canada for, to hold back the, uh, the sluice gates rather than release a little water at a time from big dams and things for runoff, and let it all go at once. Why didn't you get all the flooding here and there over the last few years? That was the reason, folks. What you don't know can con you. And what you don't know can make you suffer too. But anyway, from Hamish myself from Ontario, Canada, it's good night to me, your God or your gods, go with you. <laughs>